Hello everyone, it's uh, me Tom again, and uh, this is another tutorial, um, this time we're not looking at Massive, we're going to be looking at audio, uh, because it's important to remember how good audio is as a tool, and more specifically I get lots of questions about my pad sounds, uh, a lot of people kind of assume they're synths, they ask how do I make that synth, a lot of the time it's actually audio, um, such as this, and uh, I do a lot of kind of dramatic sort of grain synthesis and stretching and stuff um, with Ableton, but also with a program called Cecilia, which we're going to be looking at today. It's a free download. Um, I'll link you in the description. But um, just an example of some of the things I've done with Cecilia. So we've had this big pad sound that I bought a in with. That was created by stretching out this gong sound. Um, we've got this pad sound here which I really like, it's very eerie and this was created by stretching out this just little short sound here. So you can hear that's a dramatic difference. We've got this kind of thing here, it's quite bassy, um, I use this in my track Aurora if you've listened to that. Shameless plug. And that was created with this weird sample. That I found digging around on, I think that might actually be from another Reddit sample pack, some of the ones we're looking at today are from the recent one. Uh, and then I created this one with rain, which doesn't sound too good without filtering actually, but that was created with this sample. So uh, sometimes I'll go in and, and change these slots with the uh, actual Ableton editing, because uh, I know what I get out of that, especially like pitching and stuff and warping. It's nice to have those tools in hand on your kind of arrangement process, so I don't worry about those too much during Cecilia processing, but today we're going to go through and look at um, a processing uh, a sample for ourselves. I did try this before with Thunder and it didn't sound very good, so I'm going to do something else. So when it, this is all from the latest Reddit sample pack. So when it comes to picking a sample, you want to hear something... I mean, it doesn't really matter, you can process anything, but... Um, you know, in this one I quite like the uh, the first few seconds here. I'm going to sound really nice stretched out. So, specifically today we're focusing on these time modules and uh, we're going to be looking at the palletizer. The palletizer is a lot like the granulator actually, but um, it's just got a few more controls, so I'm not really sure. There must be some difference between them, but for, as far as I can tell, this is just like a superior granulator, which is weird. Um, so... There's a couple of options we have before we start listening to the sound. Um, first is how long we want it, and that will actually stretch it uh, according to how long it is. So you can see this file's already 30 seconds, pretty much. So having this at 30 seconds isn't going to make a massive difference. So I'm going to crank this all the way up. Um, 200 seconds, probably. I will see how that goes. It's very trial and error, this process. There's not quite as much logic behind it as I would do with synth building. Um, so, I think I'm going to end up filtering this a bit. So, uh, I suppose I should lead this with a bit of an explanation about grain synthesis. Um, so grain synthesis takes tiny little bits of the sound and sort of runs them together um, by and, and applying effects to them. And basically, I mean, I'm trying to keep it simple, partly because I can't give a great explanation of it in this instance, but. Um, the point is, we're taking these tiny little bits of the sample and, and we need to change how long those bits are. So, you know, you might have something really small down here, then you get something very fuzzy. It doesn't sound great with a long sample and a long sound. But, um, you know, for these pad sounds, I typically like to try this really high. And then the density of grains, I'm pretty sure this is just how many sticks sounds together. You can actually move it down there completely wiped out the sound. Sometimes you will find that it just like completely wipes out your sound playing. It's really confusing. But, um, 
we can change stuff like the pitch as well. I'm very trial and error in this program, and I find that, like, um, you know, you just sort of keep dialing in settings until you hit that one sweet spot where it's, it's just something sounds amazing. Um, sometimes that can take a long time, sometimes you can do it pretty much instantly. Um, the other thing you can do is write in automation for these. So uh, I quite like the picture it is actually. Maybe I'll do it for the duration. Um, you can actually go about writing in automation for this stuff. So I think this is the position one. What we want is the, that's not the right dial, is it? Well, at the moment, I think it's selected us on the wrong position. I can't remember how you, it tells me. Yeah. Shift click, that's what I want. Okay. So, I could change playback speed if I wanted to, uh, but you, know, you just draw an automation here. And then it all. Yeah, maybe it doesn't. I thought sometimes it um, clips it for you. So you can do lots of detail here. Get a bit moment where it drops down. Oh, I see. You can change it. I don't. I don't use the um, the automation very much for the simple reason that. Um, I don't think you guys know what that was. Um. Yeah, probably because I like using, like, like I was talking about before, I like putting them in arrangement view and using them there. So, you know, a lot of this stuff is pretty arrangement specific, but if you're in the kind of headspace where you know exactly what you want out of the sounds going in, then I think this automation tool can be really useful. Just, uh, obviously, I'm not having great success with that at the moment. Um, Let's do a bit of pitch. Might have to re-trigger the playback. Sometimes you'll find with these effects you have to re-trigger the playback to uh, really get it working. Yeah, there you go. That's what it is. Um, so, I think, I'm, I don't know what Adam has put this delicately, but I think a lot of the people that watch my videos are kind of like interested in dance music production, which, um, well there's the extreme drop off, which maybe like, you can't hear an immediate use for some of this stuff, but I think this is a really good way of creating unique sounds that nobody else is making, because of just how wildly different stuff becomes when you start plugging it in. Um, I mean, you can hear some of the stuff that's going on with this. It's pretty interesting. Um, and it is just kind of about hearing it and thinking of a use for it. Um, you know, you listen to the stuff now and you might think that's crazy. That's going to be like some weird film score or some like um, abstract piece of music. But it doesn't have to be. If you put some filtering on this, if you kind of EQ'd it, pitched it in an appropriate way. Use this for you could use it in uh, like some kind of synth, some kind of reprocessing processing process, or pads as I do a lot of the time, um, and even like shorter sounds, you know, like just for extra layering on your tracks can be good. Kind of rhythmic stuff it'd be useful for. 
So just get in and have a play with it um, would be my advice. Hopefully you found this useful. Um, I think I said some useful things. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.